Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim. Come here, Sam. You want to say hi? Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, come on. You got to come up. Camera's up here. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Say hi. <laughs> okay. Yes, I love you too. Look at look at his beautiful face. My big boy. Okay, go, go play with your toy. If you hear crunching, it's because Sam got a new Frisbee. And it's not going to last long. Um, anyway, I want to give a shout out to Brother Barry Scarborough, um, Chelsea Bedell, Crystal Safe Center, Kiara, Sister Kiara, Mrs. Mustard Seed. While I was in Israel and for, a, for over two and a half weeks, I was unable to upload because of uh, community guideline strikes. I won't go into all that because we don't want to do that again. And um, I just shout out to them because they did reach many people to let them know we got a lot of messages. Yes, I am fine. I do want to go back and share with you. I want to. I want to stick to the topic. I will share a little bit about the Israel trip. Um, amazing divine appointments all along the way. What an amazing trip. And talk to you about why I'm doing this video that Joe Biden is calling judgment on America. Now, for the believers, that does not cause us fear. We take our seat of authority and pray. Information is power because with that information, we can know how to pray. Amen. And we, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, we are the restrainers. We are holding back the Antichrist system from fully recognizing or coming to fruition. And it is, we are in the final moments of the end of days. It is, I prayed the other day when doing a Patreon video and, uh, and the Lord gave me this. These are the words. This is it. This is it. So as long as we're here, we occupy and redeem the time, but it's important to know what's going on. So I need to go back and several months ago when the Muslim prophecy came out that on July 8th, Israel would be decimated and Muslim leaders were saying this is going to happen. As, that new, as the news came out, Holy Spirit was so loud and clear to me that I was to go to Israel and be on the streets of Jerusalem and be praying on July 8th. Now, I knew that Israel would not be decimated because we know what the Bible says, right? We know that God himself, he who neither slumbers nor sleeps, will protect Israel. We know Ezekiel's war, and I'm going to talk about that as, as I tell you places I went while I was there on prayer assignment. So two days after I booked my flight, I was at a prayer meeting, and a dear, dear saint of God, a dear sister, Sister Vonda, she prayed, and she had a word. She had no knowledge that I was going, and she said, Pastor, the Lord showed me you are going to be on the streets of Jerusalem pointing and rebuking. And I said, well, Sister Vonda, here's what happened. Later, um, and as she prayed, she said, you will be a trumpeter. You will be an oracle for God. Later, at a class, uh, 3BI, Dr. Billy Brim had the class pray for me. So shout out to all the 3BI students. And uh, Sister Billy said the very same thing, that I was going to be an oracle. And um, that was just confirmation. So off I go to Israel. I have to tell you, if you are planning international flights, that um, flights are being delayed. There's a lot of flight delays, so just make sure if you're going to go internationally, like I did, I had to fly from St. Louis to Newark to fly out the next day to Tel Aviv. I do want to thank the Lord. I was upgraded all along the way on this trip, even in the hotel. Well, when, when I got to the hotel, the inn ball in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, 10 years ago in 2012, November of 2012, I was with others and I was on a trip to Israel. And shortly after that trip, the Lord gave me a vision and said, I'm going to give you this. And I saw the tile. And 
a specific pattern in a tile floor in Jerusalem. And so I just assume maybe God's going to give me an apartment or maybe he's going to give me a, a, a condo or something. Maybe maybe I'm going to declare Aliyah and, and go to the homeland. Who knows? Well, when I was upgraded and I walked into that suite, that exact tile floor was the floor that I saw 10 years ago. And I haven't thought about that for a long time. And I knew it was a harbinger, a marker, that I was there for a reason. And I'm telling you the prayers I had in that place. God gave me that beautiful suite for the week for a divine appointment. So I don't have time to go into everything with Israel, but I do want to tell you a couple days after I left, Joe Biden came in. And um, for those who don't know, Naftali Bennett, I, I have been saying for some time that Israel, it wasn't by election that Bennett was the acting prime minister. It was by a coalition government. So in Israel, you have a Knesset, a parliament, and you have 120 seats. And no party in the Knesset has at least 61 seats in and of itself. So they have to work with other parties and get a majority to be able to be the ruling party in the parliament in Israel. Well, we know that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was the longest running prime minister in the history of Israel. And he is the head, if you will, of the Likud party. The Ben, uh, Naftali Bennett did a unity working together with the Arab, with the Muslim party in Israel. And so for the first time in history, we had Arab party in the, in the dominating party and helping to run the government. So right from the beginning, Naftali Bennett was working with the Arab party in Israel to divide the land of Israel. Naftali Bennett, if you've been following, he stepped down and his second in command is Yair Lapid. Yair Lapid right now is the acting prime minister in Israel. Now they go to elections on October 25th and I'm going to tell you right up front, I absolutely 100% believe that Benjamin Netanyahu will be back in office. The thing you need to know about Yair Lapid, his first foreign visit, almost immediately after stepping into that role of prime minister, was to fly to France and meet with none other than French President Emmanuel Macron to discuss a two-state solution dividing the land of Israel. Now I'm going to say this, Genesis 12, 3. The Lord said to Abraham, to Abraham, he said, I will bless those who bless you. He's speaking of Israel. And those who curse you will be cursed. And through you, the nations of the world will be blessed. So keep this in mind. So now you have Emmanuel Macron working with Yair Lapid. And they want to divide the land of Israel. And who's coming right on the back of it who has been there was Joe Biden. I'm just going to bottom line it. Joe Biden met with Mahmoud Abbas, Abbas, the president of the Palestinians. He met with Saudi Arabia. He and Yair Lapid signed a declaration. And basically that declaration is for a two-state solution. It had a lot of resolutions in it. And it's moving toward a two-state solution. What they want to do is take East Jerusalem. And in fact, when Joe Biden's limo was taking him to East Jerusalem, he had them remove the Israeli flag from it. Why? Because he did not want to offend the Palestinians because he has already made the commitment working in cooperation with the UN, an evil organization, and with um, Emmanuel Macron and with other world leaders and with the I.R. Lapid to divide the land of Israel. So they want to take East Jerusalem and make it the capital of Palestine. They want to take the West Bank. Now, the West Bank is ancient Judea and Samaria. They want to take the West Bank and 
There are approximately 3 million Palestinians living in settlements there and 250 to 300,000 Jews in settlements there. They've already said you have to stop uh, the Jewish people making settlements there. And we want to give that area to the Palestinians and have a two-state solution. And they're calling this the roadmap to peace. You know what the Bible says. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction happens. Now, the one of the first places I went on prayer assignment was the Golan Heights. The places I'm telling you are not your uh, tourist destinations. And so at the Golan Heights, I prayed. And I could literally see Syria and Lebanon. You know in Syria what's going on. You have the five nations that Ezekiel said would be there. Rosh, Russia, Tagarma, Turkey, uh, Persia, Iran, Kush and Put, Libya and Sudan. Erdogan of Turkey has great governance over Libya. Military from Libya is there. Putin has great governance over Sudan. Military from Sudan is there. Ezekiel prophesied 2,500 to 2,800 years ago that these nations would come against Israel from the north. They're there. They're there. And while Ukraine, Russia, conflict is going on, war, whatever you want to call it, Russia has quadrupled its presence in Syria. And Vladimir Putin has said, back when Naftali Bennett was still in, because he was mad because of the support to the Ukraine, he said, we're going to come and we're going to go in, we're going to take the Golan Heights. And why would they want to do that? I believe that this will be the hook in the jaw that brings them down for the spoils of war because that's where the natural gas is coming from. Well, brothers and sisters, while others won't go there because of potential danger and conflict, praise God, I was there. I was pointing. I was praying. I was praying in the spirit, and it was amazing. Going into the West Bank, uh, it was very challenging. The driver that I had hired did not want to go. In fact, he had not been to the areas in the West Bank where I said I'm going to go. And I went to an amazing area. We went through Arab, uh, we went through Palestinian uh, communities as well as Jewish. I prayed in Ariel, which is the capital of, of um, the West Bank. Samaria is called Shamron. And... Uh, it, it was amazing. It was amazing, the prayer there. I could see where the, the area where Caleb and Joshua were buried. And, and what I want you to know is, in, in fact, the hotel that I visited, uh, there's only one hotel in Ariel. The man who built it, he and his wife, they built it against all odds. They built it, um, and in fact, the man who found it, Ariel, that area on a rocky, basically a rocky mountain was amazing. But, but this man and his wife, they have had two terror attacks at that hotel. And so while we were there, and what was interesting, while I was there, I stopped in a Lebanese market and there was Ben and Jerry's. Now, I don't know a lot about Ben and Jerry's company. I do believe they're quite liberal in their positions. But um, I got some good ice cream. Later that night, I was watching the news from the end ball, uh, my home for the week in Yerushalayim, and I saw where Ben and Jerry's was pulling it out because they are for a two-state solution. And basically, they're pulling their ice cream out of those areas of the West Bank until they make it an area, you know, a state for the Palestinians. So they are basically anti-Israel, anti-Semitic. Um, but I found that really interesting that I had received it that day. And that day, I saw in the evening that they were going to stop uh, allowing that in there. Really interesting. I'm going to share some things with you that really kind of shocked me. So I prayed there. And I got to see where the conflict, what the conflict is over. I will tell you, as you go through those uh, Arab settlements... It's just like the Gaza. When Bill Clinton pushed for Ariel Sharon, the then prime minister, to give up, to pull all Jewish people out of the Gaza, all settlements, 
when the Jews established and developed settlements, they built infrastructure, hospitals, schools, shopping. They built infrastructure. When you look at what the rest are doing, it, be, it, it is so vastly different. <coughs> Excuse me. It, it just is not the same. I want to be careful what I'm saying, but there is a marked difference in those settlements. But it was fascinating to me to be there where, what the conflict is over. Brother Barrett, you said it. Of course, Pastor Tim would be there. Yes. And they were God assignments. And I prayed. So left there. And, um, you know, on the way to, I had time at one of the airports, a Muslim man came to faith in Yeshua. It was so amazing. As I shared with him, when we talked about world events, how the Bible prophesied and what really got him was I shared the testimony of a dear man of God who's a pastor. I'm not going to say where or give his information away. He he hated the Jewish people at one time. And a Muslim from Jordan, he, he, he'll he tell you how he could see the soldiers on the Israeli side and would hope that they would do something that he could shoot them. And now he loves the Jewish people because he is born again. And he's a mighty man of God. But I shared his testimony about how he came to faith. And I could see similarities with him and this Muslim man. And after some time, this Muslim man weeping believed on Jesus, believed he is the Mashiach, that he died for his sins once and for all, past, present, and future, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. You know, the journey would have been worth it for that one man. As I got to Israel, I realized that many of the secular Jews, those who are, I'm going to call them pretty much non-religious for the most part. If they are, they're like Christians who go to church on Christmas and Easter. And I'm not saying that people who do that, they have to go to church to be saved. If you believe that Jesus is the Messiah and he rose from the dead, boom, you're born again. John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so I found that many of them are for a two-state solution. They believe that this is the roadmap to peace. And they didn't even know about the prophets and the prophecies. And I found myself sharing about the prophecies and everything going on. And it, it, it was amazing. I want to share with you why what Joe Biden is doing is bringing judgment on America. And we need to pray. Um, and not fear. Now I will tell you that this is it. All signs pointing toward the rapture of the church. When, I don't know. Until then, because we're the restrainers. Satan wants us out of here. We, the bride, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, we want out of here. And our bridegroom wants us. And so, praise God, we're in the final moments of the end of days. But I want to give you some information that's really critical to show you just a few because throughout history world leaders presidents prime ministers kings that have come against israel and have urged israel to give up land for peace it has not fared well for them now we know that israel became a nation again on may 14 1948 in fact before that in november i think it was 29th uh the U.S. actually was recognizing the right of the Jewish people to come back to the homeland. So, but May 14th, 1948 is the date. I want to give you 10 examples of times that United States of America presidents have gone against Israel and encouraging them to divide the land and how that has fared. I'm not making this up. You can look all of this up. It is absolute fact. And what Joe Biden is doing is very dangerous. And I believe calling for judgment on America. Number one. The last time the U.S. government refused to veto an anti-Israeli resolution at the U.N. Security Council was 1979. On March 22, 1979, 
the Carter administration chose not to veto UN Resolution 446. Now, these are things that are against Israel. Four days after that, on May 26th, the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty was signed in Washington. As a result of that treaty, Israel gave up a tremendous amount of territory. Now, whenever Israel has given up land for peace, it has never worked out. Two days later, on March 28th, the worst nuclear power plant disaster in U.S. history made headlines all over the globe. The following comes from Wikipedia. How many of you remember the Three Mile Island uh, devastation? Because I do. The Three Mile Island accident was a partial nuclear meltdown that occurred on March 28, 1979. In reactor number two of the Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station in Dauphin County, Pennsylvania, United States. It was the most significant accident in U.S. commercial nuclear power plant history. The incident was rated a five on the seven point international nuclear event scale. Um, Brothers and sisters, I remember it. It was devastating. This is after Carter refused to veto the anti-Israel resolution that would have horrific impact on Israel. Number two, on October 30th, 1991, this is at the same, around the same time that President George H.W. Bush announced to the world that we had a new world order. George H.W. Bush opened the Madrid Peace Conference, which brought Israel and Palestinians together to negotiate for the very first time. In his opening speech, Bush told Israel that, quote, territorial compromise is essential for peace, end quote. Remember what I said? Listen, no man, no woman, no leader, no nation, and no league of nations has the right to alter the boundaries that God established for himself and his people, Israel. No one does. Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you, and those who curse you will be cursed. And through you, the nations of the world will be blessed. How we treat Israel determines that blessing. For the nation, I'm not talking individually or being born again. So that's what he said in his legendary speech. The legendary storm. <laughs> this is quite funny. Um, actually, in his opening speech, Butch told Israel, I'm going to say it again, that territorial compromise is essential for peace. At that exact same time, the perfect storm was brewing in the North Atlantic. The legendary storm traveled, listen to this, 1,000 miles the wrong direction, that's unheard of, the wrong direction, and sent 35-foot waves slamming directly into President Bush's home in Kennebunkport, Maine, destroying his home in Kennebunkport, Maine. It traveled 1,000 miles in the wrong direction. God wasn't playing around when he made that statement in Genesis 12, 3. Number three, on August 23rd, 1992, the Madrid Peace Conference moved to Washington, D.C., and the very next day, Hurricane Andrew made landfall in Florida, causing $30 billion in damage. It was the worst natural disaster up to that time in U.S. history. I remember the devastation to Dade County in Florida. Anybody who was in the real estate sector, you'll know exactly what I was talking about, or anybody who lived there during that time. Fourth, you think he would, oh, not yet. On January 16th, 1994, President Clinton met with President Assad of Syria to discuss the possibility of Israel giving up the Golan Heights within 24 hours 
the devastating Northridge earthquake hit Southern California. It was the second worst natural disaster up to that time in U.S. history. Now, my wife and I lived in Newport Beach, California at the time. We loved it there. The day before, the Lord gave me a dream. Uh, there are many people who could validate this. In the dream, I saw things that were happening. I saw the picture over our bed fall. I don't know why I didn't just take it down. I saw the chandelier in the dining room going back and forth and the refrigerator slamming. And in my son TJ's room, my wife had put up a net. I don't know if any of you have ever seen. They used to do this, a net where you, in the corner where you'd put the stuffed animals up. He had a lot of stuffed animals. And uh, in the dream, they were falling. So when the quake hit 24 hours later, I literally pushed Karen out of bed and ran to the room and covered my son's body with my own. Those stuffed animals didn't hurt, but I didn't want him to be alarmed. He slept through it. What kills you are the aftershocks afterward. And uh, I, I really saw some, some things with that. I was in my office, which had three walls of glass. I, my office was next to the president of the company and I was on the phone with my friend back east as I'm looking across the parking lot and the building with glass, a lot of glass out there, I hear that horrible screech and they're popping. And I'm telling you, no, I know this is awful, these earthquake and aftershocks, but it's kind of fascinating. I hear the, the president yells, Tim, you idiot, get under your desk. If those windows are popping, ours could pop. I literally saw the parking lot between look like a wave. It was, it was really something to behold. We lived through that. Fifth, on January 21st, 1998, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived at the White House but received a very cold reception. In fact, President Clinton and Secretary of State Madeleine Albright actually refused to have lunch with him. Can you believe that? That exact same day, the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke, sending the Clinton presidency into a tailspin from which it would never recover. And still today. Number six, on September 28, 1998, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright was working on financing a plan which would have had Israel give up, listen to this, approximately 13% of Judea and Samaria, where I was, I was there, the West Bank. On that precise day, Hurricane George slammed into the Gulf Coast with wind gusts of up to 175 miles an hour. Brothers and sisters, we're, this is all factual. These things happen. You know, God has given us warning after warning after warning. Number seven, on May 3rd, 1999, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat was supposed to hold a press conference to declare the creation of a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as the capital. On that precise day, the most powerful tornadoes ever recorded in the U.S. ripped through. Now remember, Yasser Arafat did this under the support of the president of the United States. On that precise day, the most powerful tornadoes ever recorded in the U.S. ripped through Oklahoma and Kansas. At one point, one of the tornadoes actually had a recorded wind speed of 316 miles an hour. Number eight, on April 30th, 2003, the roadmap to peace that had been developed by the so-called quartet was presented to Israel Prime Minister Ariel Sharon by U.S. Ambassador Daniel Kurtzer. Over the next seven days, the U.S. was hit, listen to this, by a staggering 412 tornadoes. It was the largest tornado cluster ever recorded up to that time. Number nine, you think he would have learned from his father. In 2005, President George W. Bush, the son of George H. W. Bush, convinced Israel that it was necessary to remove all of the Jewish settlers out of Gaza and turn it over entirely to the Palestinians. According to the New York Times, 
The very last of the settlers were evacuated on August 23rd, 2005. On that precise day, a storm that would be given the name Katrina started forming over the Bahamas. The city of New Orleans has still not fully recovered from the damage that storm caused, and it ranked as the costliest natural disaster in all of U.S. history up to that time. I, I'm sure that many of you remember Katrina. Number 10, on May 19th, 2011, Barack Obama told Israel that there must be a return to the pre-1967 borders that would give Jerusalem back, uh, take it away from the Jewish people. God have mercy. Three days later, on May 22nd, a half mile wide EF5 multiple vortex tornado ripped through Joplin, Missouri. According to Wikipedia, it was the costliest single tornado in U.S. history. And I know many of you remember that. Well, why am I sharing that with you? Because what Joe Biden has done is set the course for endorsement, for dividing the land of Israel. He went in with this, he being, I believe, an Adonijah, an illegitimate administration, went into another illegitimate administration. Now, I'm going to tell you, I prayed and I believe, I 100% believe that it will not happen. I have a connection to that land. I stood there and I prayed. I stood in Jerusalem and I prayed. I prayed at the Western Wall. And I'm going to tell you guys what happened. It was supernatural. Um, for those who don't believe in these things, okay. But I'm going to share with you what happened. I, I can't tell you how long I was praying at the Western Wall. I was drenched my shirt when I was done from the tears. No wonder they call it the Wailing Wall. When I was done, an Israeli rabbi, and they do not do this. Anybody who's been there, you know they do not do this. He came up to me. He started talking to me in Hebrew. Now, while I can, many of you know I can quote scripture in Hebrew and the ancient Hebrew, but in the modern Hebrew, I, I'm lost. Um, and I said, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. He was talking so fast, tears in his eyes. And he said, he could speak English, thank goodness. He said, but you prayed in perfect Hebrew. I was praying in the spirit. Um, but he heard it in perfect Hebrew. And he, he, he said, I've never heard such a prayer. He kissed both my cheeks. He called me brother. And he said, may I bless you? And he laid his hands on my head and blessed me. I'm telling you, something happened. I have had some major folks uh, that, that speak into my life who have spoken and said they believe that something was settled for Israel that, with that prayer and what he heard and for the United States of America. Um, I believe it. I believe it. I believe because I know I was sent there on prayer assignment. There's no glory to me, all the glory to God. But I'm going to tell you, I absolutely 100% believe that Benjamin Netanyahu will be in that office again. I believe a shaking is about to happen in the United States of America. God is about to show out and God can do it in the twinkling of an eye. And I'm going to tell you, I absolutely believe that the rapture is imminent, meaning it could be any moment. Everything that has needed to happen for the rapture has happened. Lord, what would you have me to share? Let's just pray for a minute. Abba, we love you. Yeshua, Jesus, we love you. Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, brothers and sisters, I've been having a dream. You know, years ago I had a dream of tidal waves hitting the East Coast and the West Coast. Two areas I, I want you to be aware of. 
One is the magma flow under Yellowstone. But the one that I keep having the recurring dream of is a tidal wave that I see. And I believe it is a physical, real tidal wave. It could be an earthquake that signals this, whatever it is. But I'm going to tell you what I have seen in my dream because I believe it is a warning. Um, so for those in that area, you can pray. I see from South Vancouver Island in Canada all the way down into Northern California activity and it is going to cause a tidal wave. Will this be the thing that comes because of what's going on? I don't know, but I'm just sharing with you and as the Holy Spirit has just prompted me, I'm sharing it with you. And for those there, pray. I want to tell you what happened years ago with the great San Diego fire. While houses around us was burning down and we got the reverse 911 call, Karen and I did. We had all these kids, all these animals. Um, we told the kids, pick a couple things that are precious to you. I went outside, I ripped all the plants and even the small fruit trees out. All the, all the things I could, threw it on the hill um, and soaked my house and prayed and prayed and prayed. And I believe that that prayer spared our home. Um, unfortunately, our birds, the little birds, we had two big macaws and a collective Paris that survived. But our little birds, even with five air filters in the house with all of the, it was like snow from soot. I, I They died in my hands. It was terrible. And um, so for those who are in an area, I, I'm telling you, you can pray. You can pray. I'm not trying to cause fear, but I am sharing with you what I feel prompted to share, what I see. Will we see it before the rapture? We may. Could it, I, I don't know the timing of these things. Will we see Ezekiel's war before the rapture? I don't know. But these things are real and they're happening. And what I shared with you is factual. You can write them down and look them up. I am not making this stuff up. This is real. And what I am telling you is, and what I know in my spirit, is to sound the alarm. First of all, believe on the Lord Jesus. Believe he always existed. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. We're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Believe on the Lord Jesus. That is the most important thing. The Apostle Paul said it, to live is Christ. To die is gain. Hallelujah. We cannot lose as children of God. And so I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to be renewed in your mind. Know your identity in Christ Jesus. As a born again believer, the instant you believe, boom, you are born again. A done deal. Heaven bound and rapture ready. You are seated in Christ in the heavenlies. Far above all power, dominion, rule, and authority. Praise God. Um, you know, even when I came back, I, because my flight had gotten moved up, um, in Israel to earlier that day, uh, I got back into Newark early and didn't have to spend the night. I was able to get a flight to come home, but I had like a five and a half hour wait. And during that time, I sat at a little cafe. There were two men traveling who had traveled in from Israel as well. One was Jewish. And after a couple hours of just talking and talking about world events and, and the Jewish man was there on business and, oh, we have, we have two new brothers in Christ. They have believed on Yeshua, Hamashiach, on Jesus Messiah, that he shed his blood for them, died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. And they are born again. They are part of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. They are heaven bound and rapture ready. Glory to God. So we're back. Pray for the protection of our channel. Um, I want you guys to know for those asking, well, did you have to do anything that you said you wanted to be able to travel to Israel? No, I did not. I did not. So praise God. Nor South Africa and none of that stuff. So praise God. God is so good. He's absolutely good. Remember this. If you remember nothing else I've said, God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. And soon and very soon, we 
are going to see our King. Shalom, shalom. I want to give you a blessing before I let you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted on you and his shalom, his peace, perfect, whole, complete, nothing lacking, nothing missing, be yours in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Messiah, I pray and I bless you. Shalom, shalom, and have an awesome rest of your day.